Hello, my soccer universe. Bayern are champions. Frankfurt with a miracle escape. Uh, Manchester City wins the FA Cup easily. Valencia makes it a Champions League. And Espanyol is in the Europa League qualification. Um, those are basically the headlines on a day that at least here was very much dominated by our government um, imploding. It's probably the best way, but we're not talking about politics. I made sure to put the camera a little bit further away that we can get the Espanol scarf in. Uh, I have to say I'm quite happy that Espanol made it after a really, really rough season. And we're going to talk about now those three uh, leagues. Um, or three countries, uh, the events. The only other thing is I saw Roma and Sassuolo drew uh, goalless, which uh, at the moment Roma overtakes Milan, but that more or less puts Roma out of contention uh, for the last Champions League spot, so huge um, downer for them. That last Champions League spot in Italy is pretty much between Atalanta and Milan, with a huge advantage for Atalanta. A draw tomorrow night against Juve, and I think Atalanta is in. Inter, of course, and then we'll go really to the others. Inter, if they lose to Napoli, they need to get a result against Empoli, who might still be fighting for survival, so maybe. I, ju I just don't see it. I think it's really between a million and Atalanta, no all Lombard teams. Okay, Spain, you know already the result. Espanyol up here. Wonderful Valencia shirt. I absolutely love this one. Uh, any excuse I can have to wear this one, I'll use. Uh, the early game in Spain, and today they really made it in such a way that you had the uh, important games for the spots of Europe, uh, 4.15 uh, local time here. You had the ones that were um, dealing with relegation, although there was not much happening uh, in the evening. Tomorrow you have the big boys playing. One big boy played Levante Atletico Madrid 2-2. So I think that's a second place for uh, Atleti. However, we're going to talk about fight for Champions League and Europa League spots. So European spots, and we had uh, four games that were interesting here. That was Getafe against uh, Villarreal. That was Real Valladolid against Valencia. That was Espanyol against Real Sociedad. And that was Sevilla against Athletic Bilbao. The latter of which actually started out pretty slow. And the whole thing, I mean, those four games, they started out kind of slow. Only at one spot that in Getafe, it was really um, exciting from, from, from the beginning. Ahead of this, we had Valencia in fourth with um, 58 points. Getafe also with 58 points, but losing out uh, to Valencia, uh, I think based on head-to-head -head or and or goal differential. Uh, I'm still... Honestly, I'm still not quite sure, but um, anyway, Getafe level on points is behind Valencia. Then Sevilla at 56 needed a loss of both Valencia and Getafe to have a shot of get getting in. Uh, Bilbao, 53, was playing at Sevilla. Uh, basically, a draw would secure them their Europa League spot. And then Real Sociedad at 50 and Espanyol at 50. If Bilbao loses, both have a shot at making it into the Europa League qualification. So there was a real battle for seventh and a battle for fourth. And it starts off with uh, first blood drawn. Getafe in the 13th minute gets the 1-0. Um, I think it was a nice move. I uh, got in, uh, defender took it, uh, uh, attacker for Getafe. And I'm going to pull up now the names I, I didn't write down. I have only the succession of Mancia. Portillo uh, takes it and really... Um, he takes it at the pair, pair, pair spot, it bounces and he just manages to get to it and then puts in a net. Really nicely done. At that moment, Getafe overtakes Valencia and is in fourth spot. Uh, a few minutes later, Getafe actually would have made it 2-0. Um, uh, a goal that was kind of weird because the goalkeeper seemingly had the ball, it fell off him, uh, and Getafe just can slot it into the empty net, more or less, from that. Um, the Getafe players were kind of complaining about a, a possible foul play, but there wasn't really, but what saved him was an offside that was uh, overlooked. So that goal was not given. Um, but then in the 36th minute, Valencia gets their lead uh, for a horrible, you know, Valladolid is moving forward. Um, and it is, I should have written down names here, but I have it here on the app. Uh, Soler, um, you know, the ball 
it's taking off him and comes uh, to Soler who slots it home. One nil for Valencia and uh, now Val at that moment Valencia at 61 points, same as uh, Getafe, but again they have the head to head. Um, and almost at the same time Espanyol almost scored, but again was not given because of an offside. Um, so that remained the same. And then the first kind of twist in the tale, Villarreal, who usually is the more um, the, the team that takes more possession, more more moving forward, and uh, Getafe is uh, holding back. It was actually quite the opposite uh, in that game. Villarreal after corner equalizes um, and puts Getafe now in a little not not really into trouble, but um, you know they fall again further behind Valencia. And almost at the same uh, moment, Sevilla gets the 1-0, I think, through Ben Yedda. Uh, against Bilbao. So at that point, uh, nothing really changed from before. We still have Valencia 61, Nagetafe only 59, Sevilla 59, Bilbao 53. Um, loses that diver point and, may, and enables actually um, whoever... If there's a winner between Real Sociedad and Espanyol to be overtaken. So that's where actually the action then switched to. And this is basically where it ends at halftime. Um, not much happening at the beginning of the second half, at least not. <laughs> there was lots of hair happening around me. Uh, it was just not soccer related. But uh, I had to, you know, I, had, I, I was with the kids today and yeah, I had to make breads and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, Moreno makes it 2-0 for Valencia and basically seals the deal for Valencia. So at that point we knew that Valencia is going to go through. Uh, Getafe will not make it into the Champions League unless a little miracle happens. However, now uh, it was more interesting to uh, battle for the seventh spot. And Espanyol gets the goal 1-0 uh, and moves at that moment ahead of Bilbao into the seventh spot. So we uh, had Valencia 61. Tafe 59, Sevilla 59, Espanyol 53, Bilbao 53, Real Sociedad 50. And note, the two Basque teams are out of it all. That is the one thing that I... That, 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 that was an um, additional wrench in the whole thing, because um, Real Sociedad could actually overtake Bilbao, or Bilbao could make sure that Real Sociedad is not in there. So, you know. And then in the end, both are not making it. Um, and just a few minutes later, uh, Lu Wei, the Chinese guy for es es Espanol, makes it 2 0 and basically uh, puts Espanol in prime position to make it to the um, Europa League quali qualification. And pretty much at the same time, uh, they were looking at the same time at the um, uh, video, there was a penalty given for Athletic Bilbao. Uh, Mercado got the ball here on his arm the referee didn't see it very 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 well and the ball went out but uh, the referee immediately blew the blue whistle gave a penalty of course Mercado is complaining gets a yellow card you know don't complain so much um, I know it's injustice they have war they looked at it they decide to not have a penalty but my favorite part is what shall you do then should it be a corner I mean the ball obviously went out for a corner kick. However, since the referee whistled too early, the only had it had to drop the ball between two defenders. But now this is a very tricky situation. It's in the box. And of course, uh, Sevilla would like to punt it away and give it to Bilbao way down the field. But Bilbao says, we're in prime position. We're going to fight, fight, fight for it. And the referee just kind of has the ball and wants to drop it, but he sees the file, 5 and with then behind them, uh, Vatschlik, the goalkeeper for Sevilla standing, drops the ball in front of him and he takes it up. This was the most ridiculous scene I've seen in a long time coming from a referee. For, for, first of all, um, whistling way too early, wait for the, for the corner kick, so you have a proper count, count, continuation of the game, and then uh, making the drop of the ball in such a ridiculous manner that you're clearly favoring one team. Yes, you don't want to have a goal score from there, but you know, what else to do? Let them 
fight for the ball or something like that. I found this absolutely ridiculous in many ways. I mean, I was laughing. If I was a Bilbao uh, fan, I would be fuming at that point. But yeah, at the same time where Espanyol really seals, uh, gets, uh, seals their, no, 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 not seals, but you know, kind of puts a big stamp on their game. Bilbao has a, a does, doesn't get, get the break. Then uh, didn't change much in 76. Getafe takes the lead again, uh, moves now level of points with Valencia, but unless Valencia lo um, draws, there's no point in that. And ac actually, 80, 87 Getafe equalizes 2 2. So at that point, all the other games are not that in interesting, but there was, um, don't, I have to look at there was a very uh, emotional scene. At Real Valladolid with a long time player, and let, 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 let me just get that. Yes, Fernandez coming off. Uh, who is the captain? Seemingly is, re, is retiring from the home home fans, you know, big clap. Blah, blah. Everyone knew they're, they're losing, so that was that. But then it was all about Campbell Bau get the equalizer at Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla is pretty sitting pretty uh, overall, but there's still the possibility if Will Bauer gets the equalizer, they make it in. And it seems like Sevilla gets it over, the over time, but then there's a corner. The ball falls to Will Bauer player who takes aim and hits the crossbar. And from the same move, I mean, Bilbao is committing men forward. Uh, there is a counter-attack uh, going for Sevilla, of course. The goalie for Bilbao comes out, he intercepts it, but the ball falls to Navas, who gets past the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper is almost a halfway line. There are only, I think, two Bilbao defenders or something, something like that. Uh, Navas runs towards the box, could take the shot himself, but says, OK, I'm giving it to Yeda. Then Yeda, uh, who takes the shot, is blocked, but it falls um, directly Two and now again, names, 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 falls to the feet of Ermunir El Adadi. 2 0, Sevilla is through, Bilbao is out, and we have Valencia in the Champions League, Getafe, Sevilla in the Europa League for, for sure, and in addition, uh, Espanyol plays qualification in the, for the Europa League. So that basically took care of uh, Spain. The FA Cup final was not that all all the great. I mean, the first half was a little, little bit open. There was potentially could have been a penalty called for what what for that nil nil. But I think company. I at first thought yes, this was a this was a clear penalty. Yes, it hits the arm, but he turns away and everything. It didn't scream penalty if you saw it in the replay. And shortly after, Silva makes a uh, from a nice pass of Sterling makes it one nil. There was only one, one winner from then. Um, Gabriel Jesus makes it 2-0 before the half. Um, then for about 15 minutes, uh, Watford is trying to get into the game. Uh, De, Luf De Lufeo had one chance where, you know, it was not his day for sure. He could he could have done some, 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 something, but it, in, in the end it goes wide. What Silva made, he did not make, more or less. Uh, and then De Bruyne makes it 3-0, and that was that. Gabriel Jesus, 4-0, and at that point I switched off. It ends 6-0, Sterling adding two more goals. Um, complete and utter destruction of Watford. Manchester City winning the domestic travel. That's historic. Of course, they would rather win the Champions League. But hey, you got beaten fair and square by Spurs. And so we are in Germany, which I couldn't watch live and didn't watch live because I thought I know pretty much where it's going. But there was actually quite some stuff happening. It was all the top of the table. Again, races for the championship, races for the Champions League spots, and in addition, uh, races for the Europa League spots. And it involved um, five games. Uh, and eight te uh, nine teams more, more or less. Uh, the one game that I'm not really following here was because it didn't have any implication. Um, it features teams that are in here, but uh, in the top in, in the top nine, but it doesn't. It didn't have any implication. I think it was of course Bremen against Leipzig, where uh, Bremen won two one. Um, I think they took an early lead in the 35th or some, something like that, and then. Uh, 
late equalizer by live uh, equalizer by live Leipzig and then Pizarro even gets the win for Bremen. Um, the whole thing starts early and especially in the first half there were a lot of moves um, happening and a lot, lot, of, lot of results but then it es uh, escalated quickly into pretty clear results. Uh, but Bayern drew first blood getting the 1-0 over Frankfurt. I always thought Bayern is gonna cruise over Frankfurt because Frankfurt is in really bad shape. So the other games were of course Gladbach against uh, Dortmund. Hertha against Leverkusen, where Leverkusen needed to get a win, Wolfsburg against Augsburg, Wolfsburg needed to get a win, and then Mainz against Hoffenheim. Uh, you wouldn't have looked at it, but Hoffenheim still had had a chance for the Europa League. And ahead of the game, match day, and we already know Bayern was in head. Bayern 75 points, uh, Dortmund 73 points, Leipzig a six, uh, in second, Leipzig with 66 in third. Uh, Gladbach had 55 points in fifth, but Leverkusen was just behind us with 55 uh, points. Frankfurt, 54 points, had lost their fourth spot in the previous rounds thanks to a defeat uh, at home to Mainz. Wolfsburg, 52, as I said, had a chance get it getting into uh, at least the Europa League. Hoffenheim, 51. So if uh, things fall right, Hoffenheim could have done something. Bremen was the only team that was more or less eliminated and I think never really had a chance. Maybe if uh, Wolfsburg would have lost, they uh, then they would have had a chance uh, to get in. So there was, Bremen was slightly in there. Okay, Bayern is in the lead. The next thing uh, that didn't have yet any implication is when Hoffenheim took a lead at Mainz. Uh, this just inched them a little bit closer to Wolfsburg, however then um, the first real change happened. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 I'm, I'm losing my lines here. So, uh, in the 13th minute, Hoffenheim takes the lead and moves into sixth spot. Frankfurt is in seventh, which is just qual qualification because the cup finals between Bayern and Leipzig and Wolfsburg uh, is out of Europe at the moment. However, in the 21st minute, Wolfsburg takes the one nil lead gets ahead of Hoffenheim, Frankfurt at that moment out of the European spots. Um, and then the next one, uh, the next event happened in the 30th minute when Leverkusen takes the lead at Hertha, which means that Gladbach is now out of the Champions League and Leverkusen gets the Champions League spot. Um, Hoffenheim doubles their lead, I think it was a nice free kick by Kramaric, uh, and kind of looks secure to be at least guaranteed the Euro League qualification spot. Uh, very quickly thereafter, you really see that uh, towards the end of the first half, there it's really where it, where it got crazy. Um, Hertha equalizes, and so Gladbach is back in um, in the fourth spot. And just a few minutes later, Wolfsburg makes it 2-0 against Aug Augsburg and really looks uh, kind of safe uh, moving uh, into the Europa League at that point. Um, Leverkusen makes good on everything and gets uh, a quick go-ahead goal again and from that moment on Hertha is just falling apart more, more or less and Leverkusen is in the fourth spot behind, um, behind Leipzig and ahead of Gladbach. Uh, Leverkusen at this point has 58 points, Gladbach has 56 points. Uh, and just the others, 55 for Wolfsburg, 54 for Hoffenheim, 54 for Frankfurt, Hoffenheim better in goals than Frankfurt, Bremen 53 points. And then some in the 41st minute, uh, two events happen. Wolfsburg 3-0, um, which basically, yes, Wolf, Wolfsburg is going to win against Augsburg, but more importantly, um, a red card given for uh, Hoffenheim. And a 2 nil up and still a red card, you may think, yeah, <laughs> maybe there's some sound thing in there, but most likely Hoffenheim really had the better of the game at that moment, just a stupid red card. And then to top it all off, at the end of the half, Dortmund takes the lead, I think, to, through Jaden Sancho, and is now two points behind Bayern, so they keep Bayern honest. And then the title race is more or less exciting for about three minutes. Frankfurt, who had were barely in the game. I mean, Kevin Trapp really kept them in, in, in the game. Bayern, Bayern could have been up by two or three goals easily at halftime. Didn't happen. And uh, Allaire came in 
and Frankfurt manages to get an equalizer from their first corner. 1-1. One, one. At that point, Bayern and Dortmund are level. And it was almost similar to last week uh, between uh, City and Liverpool when I thought, hmm, is there something in there? But I knew I needed Frankfurt to win at Bayern to that we talk about any serious chance. And Bayern didn't let that. Alaba uh, makes it 2-1 just three minutes later and Bayern is well on track. Um, for the championship, I think it uh, was a nice move. It uh, was, uh, was a kind of uh, um, trap. Could not hold on to the ball. It fell to Alaba, who actually initiated the move and uh, slowed, slowed it home. Then in the 54th, Dortmund doubles the lead, uh, basically cons uh, getting the victory that they needed. And Leverkusen is also doubling the lead, so also cementing their position. At that point on, the top four remained more or less as they um, have been at the end of the first half. And there were no real changes any, any, anymore. Same thing goes for Wolfsburg, Augsburg. Wolf, Wolfsburg goes on to beat Augsburg 8-1. Bayern uh, continues their onslaught uh, in the 58th minute. Uh, they make a 3-1. Renato Sanchez gets his uh, first goal for, of the season. Trapp didn't look that great. And then the two big names that actually made this... Bayern dynasty, uh, uh, Frank Ribéry and Arjen Robben come on and both score goals in the final matches for Bayern. I saw Robben was a little bit um, PO'd that he didn't come on at the same time as, Ri as Ribéry, still he made his goal. Uh, so Bayern wins this one 5-1 and at that point, as we know, Hoffmann was also leading 2-0, so it was really looking dire for Frankfurt, especially with Wolfsburg really beating up on Augsburg 8-1. Uh, Gladbach also, there was not much they could do. Uh, Le Leverkusen won it 5-1, uh, adding goal after goal. And so um, I don't think they would have made it. Uh, they would have made up the goal difference, but they were close on doing so. So all eyes turned to Mainz against Hoffenheim. And I honestly didn't see this live because I, I was focused on Spain, which I could watch live. Uh, but I, I remember that I was looking at it and, and thinking, yeah, uh, Frankfurt is out, which is what I expected um, for some reason. But in the 66th minute, Mainz gets a goal. Mainz actually gets an equal a little bit later. It's taken off for offside, but they eventually do get it in the 83rd minute. And at that point... Hoffenheim falls behind Frankfurt and Bremen because uh, Bremen was leading against Leipzig. There was a quick equalizer where Hoffenheim moved back, but then shortly after Bremen got the winner to, through Pizarro. And Hoffenheim is committing men forward, and that's eventually the undoing because um, Mainz make two more goals and give Frankfurt the escape. And Mainz first beat Frankfurt, now beat Hoffenheim. Uh, both local rivals, I mean, they're all in this big area there. Um, kind of interesting. I think you got a tip, tip of the head to Mainz for keeping everything uh, honest and enabling, uh, in the end, Frankfurt to make it to the Europa League. So the German League on top ends, Bayern 78, Dortmund 76, Leipzig 66, Leverkusen 58, Gladbach 55, Wolfsburg 55, Frankfurt 54, Bremen 53, Hoffenheim 51. Hoffenheim had it all, lost it all. That was the big story of the day. Uh, other results in Germany, just quickly to round it out. We had Schalke Stuttgart 0-0. Um, we had Freiburg Nürnberg 5-1 and Düsseldorf beat Hannover 2-1. But basically, um, we knew ev everything about the bottom half, the top half. It was actually quite exciting, especially towards the end of the first half. But then also this kind of miracle escape for Frankfurt that no one could uh, really count on anymore. Well, that was actually quite long. I told the story. It was exciting. On the, on the, on the, honestly, I watched the highlights and, and so on. there was really quite some excitement going on in Germany. This is what last days should be. Um, quite happy that we got a little bit of excitement both in Spain and Germany. FA Cup final completely sucked, to be honest. If Unless you are a Manchester City so, so supporter, but for a neutral, uh, yeah. There's also, of course, the allegations against Manchester City, which 
is not really something new. I didn't find it as big news because we knew that they are uh, they're allegedly cheating with the sponsorship of Etihad, which might lead to them getting into financial fair play trouble. We have to wait, wait and see until something more gets out. Um, I don't know. Uh, I can see that Manchester City has a good reputation in England because of the style of soccer they play, which is uh, great, but on the other side, yeah, uh, the way it is made doesn't seem like too solid or stinks a little bit. Same thing goes for PSG. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the last match days in Spain, Germany, FA Cup final. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.